Ciao, I'm Ariana Esposito. Today on Ciao Italia from Sicilia, Cialdoni. I bet you know what these are. These are cannoli forms. And if you're going to make cannoli, you absolutely have to have them. So you can find them in a cook store, metal. You can get them in different sizes. So here's one that's just squared off on the edges. And then this one has kind of like a slant to it. So they make various sizes. And of course, we all know that cannoli come from Sicily. Yes. But you know, People make them in different ways. Like I keep telling you, there are no real recipes. It's only someone's interpretation of how something is done. So today, I'm going to make you a variation of cannoli that's called cialdoni. And I know what you're thinking. Oh, this is going to be so fussy. I'm going to have to make the dough and fry it. Good news. These are not fried. They are baked. And they come from right around here. Agrigento, if you have ever visited Agrigento, you know that some of the greatest Greek ruins are there in Sicily. It was just there a couple years ago. There's always an amazing thing. So Cialdoni, coming from Agrigento. So how do we make it? Well, we have to start with a dough. So here we have four cups of unbleached all-purpose flour. We're gonna put that into our food processor. Now this is gonna make a lot, but you can freeze these. You can freeze them unfilled. So if you're gonna go through the trouble, you don't wanna make three or four, you wanna make enough so that you can have them for company later on. And then we have a half a cup of sugar. So that goes in. We have, well, this is just vegetable shortening, but if we were really doing this in the old traditional way, we would be using lard but we know that that is not a good thing to do today. But the lard really gave these shells a nice crispy texture because when you eat a cannoli, it should really just shatter down the front of you, you know? So we want these shells to be crispy. So we have about four tablespoons of vegetable shortening. We're gonna put that in. And then we want one egg, just lightly beaten. So beat it up with a fork. We're going to need some milk. I don't know how much yet. Depends on how that dough is feeling. And we're going to need some vanilla. So I'm going to put the vanilla in with the egg. So there's a little vanilla, teaspoon or a tablespoon, depending on what you like. So now let's put the top on and get these dry ingredients combined. So you want to pulse that until we have that vegetable shortening pretty much incorporated in there. So now we're gonna put the egg mixture and the vanilla through the feed tube and get that kind of mixed up. And now we wanna add some milk. Just enough to give us a dough that hangs around that blade. You may have to stop and feel it. Yep, it's feeling a little dry, so we're gonna to have to add a little bit more. Let me feel it again. Still a little dry. Okay. When that starts, when the dough starts to go around that blade, then you know that you have enough liquid. Let's see what we've got here. Oh yeah, that's good. So now on a floured board, wipe this up. I want to get that into a dough. So put a little flour down on your board. 
So I used just about a half a cup of milk for the four cups of flour. Okay. You're going to get at least three dozen Cialdoni out of this. So there it is. And you see how it's holding together nicely. So just get it into a smooth ball. When you don't feel any more grittiness to the sugar, you know that you've done it right. And then ideally we want to wrap this into some plastic wrap and put it in the refrigerator for about 30 minutes or so because we're going to be putting this dough through a pasta machine. Here's our chilled dough. It's been chilling about 30 minutes or so, so now we can work with it. You want to work with it like you work with pasta, small pieces at a time. So lop off a small piece. And then put some flour down on your board. You want to flatten this dough so that you can get it through the pasta machine. So you want to make about three inch diameter circles. They don't have to be three inches, depending on the size of your forms. They could be, you could make them smaller, mini size. You could do them uh, larger if you want. But I think the three inches are kind of a nice size. And you see how pliable this dough is. So now we have a pasta machine. And this is just a hand crank. I took the hand crank off and put a motor on here so that I can have my hands free. So we want to run this through the pasta machine. I'm going to start on the lowest setting and then go to the highest setting. So get it in there. Try not to add any more flour. If you, if you see that it's sticking, well, then you may have to. But you notice that this is not sticking. So then you move up your machine to the next increment and let it go. You want this about not more than a quarter of an inch thick. Even an eighth of an inch is good. Because like I told you earlier, these are like cannoli in the sense that they should be crispy. And when you eat a cannoli, you don't use a fork or a spoon. You use your hands and you pick it up and enjoy it. So the dough is beautiful. You can see my hand through there. And I think we're going to give it one more pass. So just a little flour, not much, because more flour makes a tough, tough dough. So this is our last pass. And out of just this sheet, we're going to get, we can get at least eight, ten. So all that dough that we made is going to give you enough to make several dozens, three dozen, maybe even four, depending on the size of the form of the uh, diameter that you use. Okay, so there it is. Let me push that out of the way so we have some room here. And now you want to have a a cutter ready. You, you can use various things. Here's a cookie cutter. Okay. Here's the top to a limoncello jar that I had. Okay. But anyway, we're going to just brush this a little bit with flour, and you may want to also flour your, your form. And then just cut out circles, okay? like that. I'll do several for you. Let me move the dough up. With the scraps, you just re-roll them. There's another four. You could also use a jar top if you didn't have any cutters on hand. Bring that one up. All right, there's our circles. The scraps you keep under wraps and then you re-roll. 
and you want to have some melted butter ready. Because remember, I told you that these are not fried. Like cannoli for, cannolis are fried on the form. These are going to be baked. So that means that you have to be able to get them off. So you want to really brush the form well with melted butter. Really brush it well, okay? like that. Then you take your form. You lay the dough over. Get to the edge, and then with a little water, seal it. Okay? Don't press too hard. Once it's sealed like that, you're going to put them on bake sheets that are lined with parchment paper. So let me do a couple more. So really, really butter the form. That's really critical. Otherwise, you're not going to be able to get it off. Put it on. Your hands are going to be a mess, but that's OK. Bring it over. At the edge, just a dab so that it's really sealed. You put the sealed edge down on the bake sheet. Bring this over here so you can see. So you keep going like this until you have a whole tray full of these. Now here's another type of form. This one's a little shorter. Again, you just brush it really, really well with that butter. This is important to do this step. And then again, it's on the form. Lift. When you get to the edge, water. Okay. Place seam side down. Let's do a couple more. This is the kind of thing where you can get the whole family involved. You know, like a Saturday afternoon adventure to Sicily by making these cialdoni. Cialdoni. And see, this is how localized everything is. In Palermo, they would never make these. In Palermo, on the western side of Sicily, they would be making cannoli. They wouldn't be making cialdoni. So again, we lift that dough. A little spritz of water on the tray. And here's our last one. Your oven is on. 375. And you're going to bake these until they're nice and brown. So there they are. Now I've got to wash my hands because I have butter all over them. And you want to watch them because they could cook a little faster in your oven depending on what your oven is all about or the size of the forms that you used. So there they are, Cialdoni, ready for the oven. Next up, the filling. So here we have ricotta cheese. This is cow's milk ricotta cheese, but if we were in Sicily, we would be using sheep's milk ricotta. But that's difficult to get here. So for the filling, it's basically what you would use for a cannoli. We're using the same thing from the cialdoni. So you need 16 ounces of good ricotta cheese, and I want you to see how dry this bowl is. So when you get it from the store, you really want to drain it in a colander to get out all the extra water. Or you could go to the Ciao Italia website and you could make your own ricotta cheese by following the recipe, because I know you've seen me do that. So one container, 16 ounces, two cups of ricotta cheese in a bowl, just kind of mixed up. And of course, there are variations on how cooks do this in Agrigento, too. Some of them will add pistachio nuts to it. Some of them will add citron. Some of them will add orange peel. So then you want some confectioner sugar. So you have some confectioner sugar. And you've got to be careful, because if it's lumpy, you want to just kind of put it through a sieve, you know, just to get those. So it will blend better with the, uh, with the ricotta cheese. I mean, this is just doing, being extra cautious. You don't have to do this, but if, the, if you see a lot of lumps, this is the easier way to do it so that you can get that sugar blended really well. I'm just going to put the rest in, but so you get the idea. All right, so then we mix this around. 
And you could add flavorings to this if you wanted to. If you wanted to add vanilla, you could add an orange flavoring. I think the pistachio nuts would be a nice addition too, but we're not going to do that today. So get it mixed, and then you can just put this in the refrigerator. You could make this the day before so that it's ready when you need to fill the uh, Cialdoni shells. So this goes in the fridge. And while this is in the fridge, then we have to make the next step of this recipe, which is a sugar syrup. I know, stay tuned, because that's only part three. So to make a sugar syrup, we need sugar and water. So in this little pot here, I have a cup of water, and here I have one and a half cups of sugar. So all I really want to do, I know it seems like a lot, but we need to make something that's syrupy. So you get the sugar dissolved in this water, and you'll know it's ready when everything is clear. You see how cloudy it looks right now? It's not ready. When this is clear and you don't see any more sugar, and it's kind of syrupy, then you're ready. And then what you need to do is let it cool slightly, because this is what we're going to need as the glue to hold the nuts, which we're going to deal with next. So here we have some almonds. You know, almond trees grow prolifically in Sicily, so it only stands to reason that they would use them in many different ways in cooking. So in February, if you're in Sicily, the almond trees are in bloom. They will have what's called a sagra, which is a party, all to celebrate the almond. So the almonds appear in different things, in caponata, in desserts, in stuffings for vegetables. So here we have a cup of almonds. I'm going to do them a few at a time and grind them. Okay, just a couple more hits there. I want to leave some texture there. Let me get a bowl to put those in. Because you want that extra little crunch on the outside of your, your cialdoni. And that's what those almonds are going to provide. Now, if you didn't want to use almonds, you could use pine nuts for this as well. So just see, just roughly chop like that. Let's do the rest of these. machine gets a workout. Okay, there they are. And now, got to check on those cialdoni in the oven. So here's our sugar syrup, and it's thickened up now. And here are our baked cialdoni. We took them off the form. You got to wait till they're cool to take them off. And then you just paint them, see, with that sugar syrup. It's a little messy, I know. And then you roll them in the nuts. And then they have to dry. So when they're like that, you put them on a dish and you let them dry. Let me do one more. So paint with the syrup. Roll in the nuts. And you got to do this gently because those shells are very thin, as you can see. And that's what we want. We want a thin shell. We don't want a thick shell. Let's do one more. Paint the shell. Roll in the nuts. You could use pistachio nuts for this if you wanted to. Combination of almonds, pistachio, pine nuts, also found in Sicily. All right, once they're dry, then we get to fill them. You can see now that the nuts have dried on the form. And look at how thin this is. Thin as a dime. That's the way it should be. Even when you eat cannoli, if, you, if you're getting a cannoli that's real thick, 
That's not how they do it in Sicily. But anyway, we're gonna fill them now, and here's that filling. Remember, this is the ricotta cheese with the confectioner's sugar. And it, you can either use a spoon to fill them, or you could use a pastry bag. So here you have options. You can get these plastic pastry bags in a kitch, kitchen store, or you can sometimes find them in your grocery store. Here are paper ones that are disposable. And to fill the bag, I kind of anchor the bag in a glass because that gives me more control. And then I fill, I, I fold down the top of the bag to kind of make a little cuff. And then fill the bag with the filling. That helps me with control. Everything in the kitchen is about control. Okay, well I think you get the idea. So if you're doing a bajillion of these, you're gonna be filling the bag several times. Then you lift up the sleeve, the cuff, and push it down so that you're getting the maximum amount of air out of that. And I don't have a tip on this. I left it tipless. So I want that to go all the way down till I can see it come out, see, just like that. Then I twist the bag. Then gently, with a little pressure, I fill it, see, from both sides. Now th I recommend you do it this way because with a spoon, even though you can use a spoon, and I would use like an iced teaspoon, you've got to get right into the center of this cavity. And sometimes that can be difficult with a, with a spoon. Beautiful. And here's our last one. And you keep going like this until you've done them all. And now you can see, well, you can't eat this with a fork and a knife at all. So there they are like that. And then to serve them, I like to give them a real good coating of confectioner sugar. Okay. Cialdoni, you gotta try it. For me, keeping tradition alive is really important. And that's why today I made for you a very old recipe called cialdoni, which comes from Agrigento in Sicily. Remember, we made a dough that was very similar to cannoli, but instead of frying it, we baked it. And then we filled it with ricotta and sugar. We rolled the shells in nuts and sugar syrup, dusted everything with powdered sugar, and now they're ready to eat. One bite and you'll be back in Sicily. And until I see you Nella Cucina again, I'm Mariana Esposito. Ciao.